My name is Camille Bergen. I am a sophomore at the University of Tennessee studying aerospace engineering. I am interested in transitional shockwave boundary layer interactions. To understand these, we must first understand shockwaves and boundary layers. So air consists of molecules and it's all around us all the time. But the molecules must move out of the way in order for an object to pass at subsonic speeds or speeds less than the speed of sound. However, when the speed of an object is greater than or equal to the speed of sound, the air molecules don't have any warning and therefore can't move out of the way. This results in a wave called a shock wave that propagates faster than the speed of sound, and shock waves have discontinuous and abruptly changing properties. These are examples of shock waves as an airplane moves through the air or in a wind tunnel. Boundary layers are thin layers of viscous fluid that separate a solid surface from a moving stream of fluid. Um, these are easily seen in wind tunnel experiments. So they occur in laminar and turbulent flow. As you can see here, laminar flow consists of streamlines that are constant and parallel to each other. Turbulent flow is very unsteady, has a bunch of vortices that spiral around each other, and is uh, really hard to characterize. So what are transitional shockwave boundary layer interaction? They are steady flow phenomena experienced during supersonic flight between a shockwave and a boundary layer transitioning from laminar to turbulent. Um, it occurs here, and this is the area that we'll be studying. This is part of my research that I will also discuss later. So this is great, but why are they dangerous and how are they dangerous? So first of all, they alter the boundary layer state. So as you can see here, as you move from left to right across the flat plate and as you approach the cylinder, this boundary layer right here actually gets larger here and occurs in a separation region here. So the flow actually separates right here in this region. So at this flow separation region, you have high heat transfer rates and you have abrupt pressure increases. Um, these, this results in unwanted and very dangerous thermal and acoustic loads, structural fatigue, and ultimately failure of the aircraft or spacecraft. Um, transitional shockwave boundary layer interactions can also cause engine unstart. So what is engine unstart? Here you have a typical engine, an inlet, a compressor, a burner, a turbine, and a nozzle, but for the sake of unstart, we're going to look at the inlet and the compressor. An engine compressor has propellers that turn and they can't handle supersonic speeds. So when an aircraft is flying at supersonic speeds, the engine inlet has to slow the, that um, supersonic speed to subsonic speeds before the air can pass through to the engine. If this doesn't happen, um, when the inlet doesn't deliver a uniform stream of flow, for example, when the mass flow rate suddenly changes and is different at the inlet or exit, this causes engine unstart, and this can result in the engine failing, um, the engine destroying, getting destroyed, and ultimately the aircraft or spacecraft disintegrating. Um, engine unstart is actually, or unstart in general, is actually violent and uncontrollable breakdown of supersonic flow. It, it also occurs in wind tunnels. Um, this disintegration from unstart actually occurred once on the SR-71 Blackbird on January 25th, 1966. A pilot and his flight test specialist were flying at Mach 3.2 when one of the engines experienced unstart. The other engine was okay, so the pilot attempted to control the airplane, but the nose section here actually broke off, and this caused extremely large forces to rip the pilot and the flight test specialist from the plane. The flight test specialist broke his neck and unfortunately died, though the, the pilot was saved. So this catastrophe is a really good example of why we need to study these transitional shockwave boundary layer interactions to prevent engine unstart from happening, to prevent these catastrophes and the losses of life, and the planes as well. So how can I help? Last summer I was an intern at the University of Tennessee Space Institute, and I'm continuing my undergraduate research there throughout the year. The Horizon Research Group that I worked with, or am currently working with, is, is studying these transitional shockwave boundary layer interactions. So this is the flat plate and the cylinder. Um, all those black and white images and the gifs that I showed you earlier um, occurred on this flat plate and this cylinder in this wind tunnel. This is the setup where we analyze it in layer and imaging processes. Um, the thing that I'm actually more concerned with is the energy analysis of these images that we gather. So I take the 40,000 or so images from these test runs and I put them in a MATLAB code and I run a proper orthogonal decomposition on them and ultimately I get something that looks like this um, as well as many other graphs and it, it looks at the energy associated with these shock waves and because shock waves contain a lot of energy that can either be really, really good or really bad and so I'm looking at the energy there and this summer I'm going to be working at Pratt Whitney studying jet engine cycles and I hopefully will be able to see some examples of unstart and how that affects the engine cycle later on and 
Ultimately, through this energy analysis and the jet engine cycle stuff that I'll be working on this summer, I hope to be able to contribute to the progression of um, shockwave boundary layer interactions and better engineering of them so that we don't lose planes and people and spacecraft and so that we can better engineer things to prevent these catastrophes. Thank you for your time in reviewing my application.